Welcome back. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we will uh, discuss about the solution of variable coefficient uh, differential equations. We have seen that if the differential equation is constant coefficient, whether it is a first order, second order, third order, then uh, uh, the method of solution we have already seen in the previous lectures that you find the characteristic equation solved uh, after solving or finding the roots, we, fi uh, we formulate the solution and we get the general solution and particular solution. And in case if the differential equation is having a variable coefficient, then uh, that method fails. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, I consider a general differential equation say a second order. So, consider a second order variable coefficient differential equation as uh, say this is a 0 x y double prime plus a 1 x y prime plus a 2 x y is equal to 0. So, call this equation as 1. Then uh, how to solve it by the method of uh, characteristic equations and uh, finding the roots will not work. But there are uh, certain situation where a special forms of this uh, equation which can be solved uh, just as how we did in a constant coefficient differential equation. So, for example, if we can reduce this uh, variable coefficient differential equation into a constant coefficient differential equation by giving some suitable transformation. Uh, for example, if we consider so example, so consider the Euler Cauchy equation. So, Euler Cauchy equation. So, given by x square y double prime plus a x y prime plus b y is equal to 0. So, where a and b are constants. So, this equation though it is a variable coefficient it is in a nice form this can be reduced into a constant coefficient differential equation just by applying some transformation. So, consider the transformation consider the transformation say z is equal to natural logarithm of x or x is equal to e to the power z. So, if you use this uh, transformation then uh, we are changing the independent variable from x to z. So, if you do this transformation then what is d y by d x? d y by d x is uh, given by by the chain rule d y by d z into d z by d x which is equal to by using the transformation 1 by x d z by d x is uh, z is ln x. So, d z by d x is 1 by x 1 by x d y by d z. So, therefore, differentiating a function with respect to x is equivalent to multiplying 1 by x and taking the derivative of the function with respect to z that becomes a rule. So, if for this a case then if we find the second derivative. So, d square y by d x square is nothing by d by d x of d y by d x. So, we apply the rule 
uh, stated just above that is differentiating a function differentiating a function with respect to x is equal to 1 by x into differentiating the function with respect to z. So, therefore, we get the second derivative d square y by dx square is equal to d by dx of d y by dx which is equal to 1 by x times d by d z of d y by d x. So, which is again by definition 1 by x times d y d z of what is d y by d x? d y by d x is 1 by x again 1 by x uh, d y by d z. So, which is equal to uh, 1 by x times d by d z of 1 by x is by transformation e to the power minus z. So, d y by d z and now we can differentiate with respect to z. So, this gives me 1 by x into minus e to the power minus z. So, applying the product rule d y by d z plus e to the power minus z times d square y by d z square. So, this is equal to and uh, this e to the power minus z e to the power minus z is 1 by x and this is also 1 by x can take 1 by x outside. So, this gives me 1 by x square into minus d y by d z plus d square y by d z square. So, therefore, uh, the second derivative d square y by d d square y by d x square is 1 by z, uh, x square into minus d y by d z plus d square y by d z square. So, this implies that x square into d square y by d x square is equal to minus d y d z plus d square y by d z square. Now, putting this into the Euler Cauchy equation. So, the for the Euler Cauchy equation becomes Euler Cauchy equation becomes minus d y d z plus d square y d z square plus a times d y by d z plus b y is equal to 0. And uh, therefore, if you simplifying, simplifying this and taking d square y by d z square first. So, this is d square y by d z square plus a minus 1 dy by dz plus by is equal to 0. So, look at this equation. This equation is a second order constant coefficient differential equation. So, we started with the Euler Cauchy variable coefficient differential equation, the transformation reduce this into a constant coefficient differential equation of course, is second order and this equation can be solved. Now, we are taking the characteristic uh, root. So, it is a constant coefficient, coefficient differential equation. So, this is a constant coefficient
differential equation. So the method is characteristic roots, find the characteristic roots and uh, these three situations where the roots are real and distinct, the roots are real and equal and roots are complex. So, which uh, we have already seen. Say for example, uh, if we take the characteristic roots, uh, the roots are given by lambda 1, lambda 2 is equal to 1 minus a plus or minus square root of a minus 1 the whole square minus 4 b all divided by 2. So, the discriminant of the equation b square minus 4 a c by 2. So, uh, case if uh, okay, uh, if the roots are real roots are real and distinct. So, call it then lambda 1, lambda 2 are the real roots. Then the solution is given by solution is given by y of remember the independent variable is now changed to z, y of z is given by uh, c 1 e to the power lambda 1 z plus c 2 e to the power lambda 2 z. And again, so if I want to change it back uh, in terms of x the, to reduce, change the independent variable back to x, use the transformation. So, therefore, y of x is equal to you change z to x that is c 1 e to the power lambda 1 and z is ln of x. So, ln of x plus c 2 e to the power lambda 2 ln of x and this is nothing but ln of e to the power lambda 1 ln of x is. So, c 1 if you simplify it is uh, x to the power lambda 1 plus c 2 x to the power lambda 2. So, this is a general solution. So, general solution. If uh, the roots are real and uh, distinct and similarly, if the roots are uh, real and uh, repeated and the roots are complex can be treated similarly. Okay, this is a situation where if, uh, if the differential equation is having a very special form and in case uh, now we are going to deal with differential equation which is in a general form that is a 0 x y double prime plus a 1 x y prime plus a 2 x y is equal to 0. Oh, if uh, this cannot be reduced into a constant coefficient equation and uh, no other methods uh, are available to solve it. Then one method of solving is by using the power series solution, the series solution of this differential equation. So, let us uh, see how to solve this by using a power series solution. So, power series solution. to the equation uh, a 0 x y double prime plus a 1 x y prime plus a 2 x y is equal to 0. And what we expect is we expect a solution 
we expect a solution to this equation call it 1 1 in the form y of x is equal to summation n goes from 0 to infinity c n x minus x 0 to the power n where c 0, c 1, c 2 etcetera are constants. So, we expect a solution to the variable coefficient differential equation 1 in a power series form in an infinite power series about a point x 0. Now, the question is the question is does there exist a power series solution does there exist a power series solution solution to 1 in the form 2. So, call this form as 2. So, does there exist a power series solution to the above differential equation in the form 2 and if uh, it exists how to compute the uh, constant c 0, c 1, c 2. So, if s how to compute c 0, c 1, c 2 etcetera in 2. So, these are the two questions. So, first we address the existence, existence of power series solution of power series solution to 1. So, under what condition the power series solution for 1 exists and uh, uh, that series is convergent. To answer this question we need uh, some of the basic uh, uh, ideas some basic definitions. So, to address the existence problem that is under what condition one has a power series uh, solution of the form 2. So, we require some conditions and we define and let us uh, again state the form of the equation a 0 x y double prime plus a 1 x y prime plus a 2 x y is equal to 0 and uh, equivalent uh, normal form is equivalent normal form. So, we call this equation 1 and if we take the equivalent normal form y double prime plus p 1 x prime plus p 2 x y is equal to 0, where divide throughout by a 0. So, where p 1 x is equal to a 1 x by a 0 x and p 2 x is a 2 x by a 0 x. So, now we define what do you mean uh, what do you mean by a analytic function uh, definition a function 
a function f is said to be analytic a real valued function f is said to be analytic at a point x0 if uh, its Taylor series expansion if its Taylor series expansion about x0 given by summation n goes from 0 to infinity the nth derivative of f evaluated at x0 divided by n factorial into x minus x0 to the power n. The Taylor series about x0 exist and converges and converges to f x for all x in some neighborhood of x 0 containing x 0. So, neighborhood in some neighborhood or in this case is interval some interval some interval containing x 0. So, in this case we say that a function is analytic. Uh, examples examples see all polynomial functions are analytic all polynomial function so are analytic everywhere uh, and um, the functions containing e to the power x sin x cosine x they are also analytic and another important class of functions uh, analytic is all rational functions. So, rational functions uh, of the form p x by q x uh, where p x is a polynomial q x is a polynomial. So, rational functions are also analytic at all point except uh, the denominator uh, the points at which the denominator is not 0 uh, except at the point the denominator is equal to 0. So, rational functions is uh, analytic accepted those values of x at which the denominator the denominator is 0. Uh, for example, if we take a rational function uh, 1 by x square minus 3 x plus 2 which is written in the form x minus 1 into x minus 2. So, this is analytic is analytic at all point at all points except at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. At these two points x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2 the uh, rational function is not analytic elsewhere it is analytic. Now, a point is uh, okay, another definition is ordinary point for a differential equation. So, definition the point x 0 is called 
an ordinary point is called an ordinary point of the differential equation okay one if uh, if differential equation one uh, one is is in the normalized form so call it y double prime plus p one x y prime plus p two x y is equal to 0. If uh, both functions, if both of the functions, functions p 1 x and p 2 x are analytic. at x 0. A point x 0 is said to be an ordinary point, an ordinary point of the differential equation in the normal form y double prime plus p 1 x y prime plus p 2 x y if both of the functions p 1 x and p 2 x are analytic at x 0. If uh, that fails, if it is not true then uh, we say the uh, point is a singular point. A singular point if either or both of these functions um, are uh, not analytic at x 0 then so then x 0 is called a singular point. a singular point of the differential equation. See quickly let us look into an example y double prime plus x y prime plus x square plus 2 y is equal to 0. So, here p 1 is p 1 x is just x and p 2 x is x square plus 2. So, obviously, both are analytic for all points, all points are, are ordinary point. For the this different equation all points are ordinary points. And if we consider another differential equation x, x minus 1 y double prime plus x y prime plus 1 upon x y is equal to 0. So, here p 1 x is x upon x minus 1 and p 2 x is 1 by x into x minus 1. So, p 1 is analytic for all points except at 1. Okay. So, for p 1 x is equal to 1 is a point at which uh, p 1 is not analytic and here x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 for p 2 is not analytic at these two points. So, therefore, the differential equation is analytic for all points except uh, 1 and 0.
So, the conclusion is 0 and 1 are the only singular points. So, this uh, tells us x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 are singular points. points of the differential equation. Now, if uh, x 0 is an ordinary point of a differential equation, then uh, we have a sufficient condition to guarantee a power series solution. So, now I state the form of a theorem. theorem says if x 0 is an ordinary point is an ordinary point of the differential equation call it y double prime plus p 1 x y prime plus p 2 x y is equal to 0 then it has two linearly independent two linearly independent non trivial non trivial it has non trivial two linearly independent power series solution power series solution of the form y x is equal to summation c n x minus x 0 to the power n, n goes from 0 to infinity and the series converges in some interval, the interval of con convergence x minus x 0 less than some r. So, this is an important uh, theorem guarantees the existence of a power, power series solution to a differential equation. If x 0 is an ordinary point of a differential equation then about that point we can find if it is a if you have a second order equation then we can find two linearly independent power series solution. So, existence of uh, two linearly independent power series solution at a at an ordinary point is guaranteed by this theorem. So, now the method of solution how to compute the solution. So, method of solution is So, method of by method of solution what, what do we want to find? We want to find to find c 0, c 1, c 2 etcetera all these coefficients in the expression y is equal to our series solution is of the form c 0 plus c 1 x minus x 0 plus c 2 x minus x minus x 0 square plus etcetera which is in compact form we write as c n x minus x 0 to the power n, n goes from 0 to infinity. So, our aim is to find these coefficients, our aim is to find these coefficients. Okay, so, uh, since a series converges 
since the series converges on x minus x 0 less than r some number r by the existence theorem since a series converges for x minus x 0 is less than r about the ordinary point uh, x 0 ok the series can be differentiated term by term. it may be differentiated may be differentiated term by term on this interval c d over d x is derivative of y which is uh, c 1 plus 2 c 2 x minus x 0 plus 3 c 3 x minus x 0 square plus etcetera which is summation n goes from 1 to infinity n c n x minus x 0 to the power n minus 1. And similarly, the second derivative d square y by d x square is the derivative of the about series which is 2 c 2 plus 6, uh, 6 c 3 into x minus x 0 plus 12 c 4 into x minus x 0 square plus etcetera which is written as summation n is equal to 2 to infinity n into n minus 1 into c n x minus x 0 to the power n minus 2. So, now substituting these values of y d over d d x d square y over d x square in the original equation. Now, substituting y d over d x d square y by d x square in the differential equation. And simplifying and simplifying, we get some constant k zero plus k one into x minus x zero plus k 2 into x minus x 0 square plus x etcetera x etcetera is equal to 0, where these constants k 0, k 1, k 2 these are functions of our other constant c 1, c 2 etcetera. So, since the series since the series uh, it is valid for all x in the interval all x in the interval x minus x 0 less than r that is interval of convergence and now equating right hand side and uh, left hand side the coefficients of x, x square, x cube etcetera and also the constant terms we get k 0 is equal to 0, k 1 is equal to 0, 
k2 is equal to 0 etc. So, we get equations k0 is equal to 0, k1 0, k2 0. If you solve these equations, then we get the values of C0. So, solve these to obtain values of C0, C1, C2, etc. And once we have C0, C1, C2, etc., plug in the into the series form, we get the series solution. The series solution y x is equal to summation c n x minus x 0 to the power n. So, this is the method. So, let us uh, illustrate this by an example. So, let us uh, consider an example. So, what is the problem? The problem is the question is to find the power series from the power series solution of the differential equation find the power series solution of the differential equation given by y double prime plus x y prime plus x square plus 2 y is equal to 0. So, find the power series solution of the differential equation in powers of, so the question is to expand or get the power series solution in powers of x. So, that is you are asked to expand the get the solution in powers of x minus x 0 where x 0 is 0. Let us check whether 0 is a uh, ordinary point. Okay. So, obviously, your p 1 is x, p 2 is x square plus 2. So, all points are ordinary points. So, all points are ordinary points. So, x 0 is equal to 0 is an ordinary point. So, therefore, by the existence theorem, there exists a power series solution. So, two linearly independent uh, power series solution of the form summation c n x, x, uh, x to the power n. So, we look for a solution y x y is equal to summation c n x to the power n, n goes from 0 to infinity. So, this is guaranteed by the existence theorem. So, there are there are two linearly independent power series solution. So, we want to now our aim is to find us this C0, C1, C2, Cn. So, what we do is by differentiating, differentiating we get y prime y prime is summation n goes from 1 to infinity n into c n x to the power n minus 1. And similarly, y double prime is summation is going from n is equal to 2 to infinity n into n minus 1 x to the power n minus 2. Now, plug in these values to the given differential equation. So, substituting in the differential equation, we get summation 
n into n minus 1 c n x to the power n minus 2 the first term that n goes from 1 uh, 2 to infinity n goes from 2 to infinity the first term and the second term is x into y prime which is x into summation n goes from 1 to infinity n into c n x to the power n minus 1. Now, the third term is it is the sum of 2 terms x square plus 2 I take uh, x square into summation into y summation c n x to the power n n goes from 0 to infinity plus constant term 2 2 into summation n goes from 0 to infinity c n x to the power n which is equal to 0. Since uh, x is independent of the index we may rewrite this. So, rewriting So, rewriting we get summation n goes from 2 to infinity n into n minus 1 c n x to the power n minus 2 the first term plus summation n is equal to 1 to infinity n into c n x to the power n plus summation if we have just multiplied uh, each term by x you get x to the power n and n goes from 0 to infinity the third term there also we did a multiplication by x square. So, that results c n into x to the power n plus 2 when multiplied by x square plus 2 times summation n goes from 0 to infinity c n x n is equal to 0. Now, look at uh, the first and third term this first term and the third term. The first term the index is okay, n minus 2 the third term the index is n plus 2 we want to make all the same uniform index that x n. So, we can do the following to rearrange that. Okay, so, consider the first term. So, consider the first term first term for summation and uh, replace n minus 2 by a new variable new term index m. So, therefore, uh, what we have is m is equal to n minus 2 or n is equal to m plus 2. So, if you use this then the summation becomes then this gives the first term in terms of m, m goes from 0 to infinity. Now, n is going from 2 to infinity that becomes when n is 2 m is when n is 2 m is 0. So, the summation goes from 0 to infinity m plus 2 into m plus 1. So, n becomes m plus 2 and n minus 1 is n plus 1 into c m plus 2 into x to the power m. Now, remember that m is just a dummy variable m is a dummy variable dummy index we can change m to n change m to n notation. So, therefore, it becomes summation n is equal to 0 to infinity n plus 2 into n plus 1 into c n plus 2 x to the power n. And similarly, if you do the same thing for the third term, the 
third term. So, similarly, the third term that will make uh, n plus 2 is equal to m or n is m minus 2. So, this uh, gives in terms of m this will be m is going from 2 to infinity instead of n is going from 0 to infinity and m is going from 2 to infinity c m minus 2 and x to the power m and again that is m is a dummy index. So, therefore, we can uh, plug back the n or we okay, get this is n goes from 2 to infinity c n minus 2 x to the power n. Okay, so, now the index of all these terms are uh, n with the uh, respect to n. Okay, so, what we do is the equation now becomes the equation becomes the equation becomes summation n goes from 0 to infinity n plus 2 into n plus 1 c n plus 2 x to the power n plus summation n goes from 1 to infinity n c n but there we did not do any change x n plus summation the third term change uh, term is also changed n goes from 2 to infinity c n minus 2 x n plus the last term 2 times summation n goes from 0 to infinity c n x to the power n is equal to 0. Now, uh, we, we want to make uh, some common range this since the summation is not uh, uniform some one is starting from uh, 2 to infinity another one is 1 to infinity other one is 0 to infinity uh, the common summation range is 2 to infinity. So, the other terms uh, we can separate out for example, the first term first term, uh, summation uh, the case n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 can be separated out. So, therefore, uh, what we get is this term uh, which is 2 c 1 uh, 2 times when n is equal to 0 get uh, 2 c 2 2 c 2 plus 6 c 3 x plus the common okay, common range n is equal to 2 to infinity n plus 2 into n plus 1 into c n plus 2 into x to the power n. And similarly, for uh, the second term that can be split as c 1 x plus the common range n is equal to 2 to infinity n c n x to the power n. And the third term we do not have to change the last term we can change this is uh, 2 c 0 plus 2 c 1 x plus summation plus summation c n x to the power n, n goes from 2 to infinity. Now, if uh, we rearrange all this, we get this implies that 2 c 2 plus 6 c 3 
plus the summation the first time. Uh, okay, so, if we combine all these things together, if we add them together, we get 2 C 0 plus 2 C 2 plus 3 C 1 plus 6 C 3 x plus summation the common summation we take n is equal to 2 to infinity n plus 2 into n plus 1 C n plus 2 plus n plus 2 C n plus C n minus 2 times x to the power n is equal to 0. And this series converges for in the interval x minus x 0 is less than r. So, equating the coefficients of the powers left hand side okay, to 0 because right hand side is already 0, we get 2 c 0 plus 2 c 2 is 0 and 3 c 1 plus 6 c 3 is 0 and uh, this gives c 2 is minus c 0 and c 3 is minus half c 1. And also we get from the summation term that n plus 2 n plus 2 into n plus 1 c n plus 2 is equal to uh, is plus n plus 2 into c n plus c n minus 2 is equal to 0. If we solve it c n plus 2 is obtained as minus n plus 2 c n plus c n minus 2 divided by n plus 1 into n plus 2 for n greater than 2. So, the for, uh, for each case n is equal to 2 case c 4 can be solved c 4 is minus 4 c 2 plus c 0 by 12. So, this implies that c 4 is 1 by 4 c 0. And similarly, n is equal to 3 case C 5 is sold to be 3 by 40 C 1. So, therefore, the solution can be written as the solution can be written as by using these coefficients. It, so, y of x is equal to C 0 into 1 minus x square plus 1 by 4 x to the power 4 minus etcetera plus c 1 into x minus half x cube plus 3 by 40 x to the power 5 plus etcetera. So, we see that there are two series. So, this is uh, two sol series solutions uh, the first one and the second one they are linearly dependent two series solutions and their linear combination C 0 uh, of the first one plus C 1 of the second one is a general solution, say general series solution. So, therefore, by doing this method, we can find uh, if, uh, if a point is an ordinary point, we can get the series solution and uh, two linearly independent series solution of a differential equation if the point is order a point. And if the point is a uh, uh, singular point, there are methods Frobenius methods and all that uh, will come uh, in another uh, series. Okay, so, with this uh, I would like to finish. So, we have seen even if uh, the differential equation is variable coefficient, uh, we can have a solution in, the in power series form, series solution. Okay.